do we innovate in industries that aren't known for innovation? Energy, water, waste, transportation. These industries are the critical backbone of our economy, and they need modernization. But because failure is catastrophic, these are, by, by design, change-resistant industries, making it incredibly difficult to introduce new technologies into them. Also, when we make infrastructure investments, these investments tend to favor status quo rather than upgrading capabilities. I've been working in this sector for about 15 years in um, applied R&D to discover new technologies for uh, the utilities, uh, for major manufacturers, and in recent years, I've been working on, uh, with startups, on machine learning tools for risk-averse industries. And I can tell you that although the infrastructure challenges seem daunting, the tools we have to address them have never been better or more sophisticated. For example, you can't go to a TED Talk anymore without hearing about drones. We're using drones in the utilities space to look at power wires, to monitor them. We're using them in the construction industry to watch building sites and monitor them. But that's only half the story, because these drones are now closing the feedback loop and en enabling other technologies in those sectors to be more effective. Ultimately, in the construction sector, we can expect the, co the cost of construction to drop maybe by half, and the speed at which we can build buildings to double through to technologies like these. Then we have, whoops, data transparency. In the utility sector, slowly but surely, leading utilities are opening usage data to innovators. What does this mean? It means that early stage companies can now design technologies that will stabilize the grid or energy efficiency companies, service providers, they can go out and more easily identify waste, reduce that waste, save money in the process, and make a better grid for everyone. Oops, sorry. Advanced modeling and AI simulations. These used to be the purview of the national lab systems. T today, with the drop, in compute power, uh, rather, in, in the cost of compute, we can apply these advanced technologies to innovate, to create new uh, manufacturing processes that use less energy, that save money, and make better overall products. And it can be used, you, we can make new materials out of them as well. These are very powerful tools. So, in the, um, these technologies we see are being adopted by the incumbent industries. In the utilities, we're seeing solar and wind and storage. They're coming online. They're becoming parts of, these, of the utilities' business models, and they're generating new revenue opportunities. And that's great. But what's even more great is that within 20 or 30 years, these will probably be their core revenue drivers. And that's critical that we keep innovating. So like I was mentioning before, technology is required. In fact, it's essential. But it is certainly not sufficient to modernize these industries. What we absolutely need to do is partner these technologies with best practices in business to get them adopted into the industry more easily. What I've seen over the years are a few techniques that I find very promising. They're being used elsewhere. We should be using them more often. For example, we need to think about co-location. It seems simple. You have early stage, income, uh, early stage companies working with incumbents. They can share domain expertise. They can share knowledge. They can share lab equipment. 
This is critical in allowing new technologies to be more rapidly validated and get to the market quick, more quickly. And we can enable this by creating easier legal structures to do so. Another interesting idea is market-based uh, technology-driven innovation. For example, instead of taking a technology push approach to things, taking a technology and pushing it out, what if we started by developing a business first, thinking about if I had a technology that worked like this, A, B, C, then I could do X, Y, Z. Once you establish that there is this business case, you can inspire confidence, you can minimize that business risk that incumbents face by getting into the industry. And then you, you, then you backtrack. Then you look at how do I make that technology happen? Guess what? I am now able to specify very precisely exactly what kind of widget I need and exactly what it has to be able to do. That's important too. Because when I'm able to do that, I'm able to reach out to the innovation ecosystem, to the entrepreneurs, to companies around the world, and tell them, I want something that does A, B, and C. And I can do something like a reverse Kickstarter. I can offer you a contingent purchase uh, uh, purchase offer. So meaning the winner of my competition, a startup or whoever, would win a contract that says, I will buy 20 million units from you at a certain price, if you can do this. And that really is amazing because it helps get startups or innovators to be working on problems to solve really pressing industry problems today. It also uh, provides market signals so that VCs come in and fund those startups because they see a market for the products the startups have. The stakes have never been higher. About 40% of the American GDP is in these infrastructure industries, and they need to be updated. But there is a huge opportunity here because we can take these legacy sectors and turn them into growth sectors, driving the American economy and ultimately creating better infrastructure overall. And better infrastructure is better for everybody. Thank you very much.